In the history of Major League Baseball, there are only 38 pitchers ever to win at least 225 games while earning at least 65 war. Of those 38, there are only 5 that are not in the Hall of Fame. Two of those 5 are not eligible yet for Hall of Fame election. They are Justin Verlander and Zach Granke and both will be first ballot electees once eligible. Another of those 5 is Roger Clemens where, in previous videos, I've mentioned how he's had one of the greatest pitching careers ever, but has not been inducted into Cooperstown due to his ties with PEDs. Another one not in the Hall of Fame is Jim McCormick, a pitcher who played in the 1880s where, in actuality, he has much support for Hall of Fame induction. Personally, he probably ought to be inducted, but that's a topic for another time. Lastly, that final player on this list to win 225 or more games while earning at least 65 war was Louis Tiant. Louis Tiant was one of the greatest starting pitchers ever to play in Major League Baseball, arguably the greatest Cuban-born player ever, and yet he has not been elected into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Just how good was he and why hasn't he been inducted yet? Louis Tiant was a starting pitcher who played in Major League Baseball for 19 seasons from 1964 to 1982. He played for six teams, but spent the most time with the Cleveland Indians and Boston Red Sox. You probably best know Tiant for his unusual pitching windup, making a near 180 twist facing the shortstop before delivering the ball. I don't know about all of you, but his windup always reminded me of a ballerina spinning in place. Quirky pitching style aside, just how good was Tian? In his career, Tian started nearly 500 games and pitched in nearly 600, throwing nearly 3,500 innings overall. He went 229 and 172 while recording an ERA of 3.30, adjusted ERA of 114, a whip of 1.199, has nearly 2,500 strikeouts, and earned 66.1 war. He's a three-time All-Star, received Cy Young votes in three seasons, and received MVP votes in four seasons. A couple of those seasons are noteworthy, and we'll get back to them later. Tian's career resume is outstanding, but just how great was he compared to others during his era, as well as other pitchers all time? In the 19-season stretch from 1964 to 1982, Tian is within the top 11 pitchers in innings pitched, wins, war, strikeouts, complete games, and shutouts. Among 18 pitchers with at least 3,000 innings pitched during that time frame, Tiant ranks 15th in ERA, 10th in adjusted ERA, and 10th in whip. If we lower the threshold to 2,000 innings, out of 58 pitchers, Tiant is 30th in ERA, 16th in adjusted ERA, and 13th in whip. Among all pitchers in the history of Major League Baseball, Tian ranks inside the top 50 in war and strikeouts, top 75 in innings pitched and wins, top 160 in complete games, and perhaps most surprisingly, top 25 in shutouts. Among the 130 pitchers to throw at least 3,000 innings, Tian ranks 65th in ERA, 64th in adjusted ERA, and 41st in whip. I thought it might be fair to also compare him to other pitchers in a more recent era. Among pitchers in the live ball era, Tian is within the top 30 in war, top 45 in innings, wins, strikeouts, and complete games, and top 15 for most shutouts. Out of 89 pitchers with 3,000 innings in this era, Tian ranks 28th in ERA, 39th in adjusted ERA, and 24th in whip. Based on all that information, Tian was around the top 10 starting pitcher during his time in Major League Baseball, a top 45 starter in the live ball era, and a top 75 or so pitcher all time. Those rankings include both traditional counting stats and advanced statistics as well. Louis Tian's career numbers are beyond amazing, but perhaps even more impressive was his 1968 season. In 1968, Tian started 32 games and threw 258 in a third innings. He went 21-9 while recording an ERA of 1.60, Adjusted ERA of 186, a whip of 0.871, struck out 264 batters, and earned 8.5 war. Tiant's ERA, adjusted ERA, war, 9 shutouts, and 5.3 hits allowed per 9 innings 
all led the American League. If you're not too familiar with 1968, it was notorious for being a pitcher-dominated season, capped by Bob Gibson's famous year where he recorded an ERA of 1.12, the lowest ever in the live ball era. It also included Denny McLean's 31-win season, the last occurrence of a pitcher winning at least 30 games in a single season. Lost among Gibson and McLean's seasons was Teons, whose ERA and war were both the second best among all pitchers in baseball. Through 2023, Teons' 1.60 ERA is the fourth lowest in the live ball era among qualified pitchers, and the lowest ever in the American League in that era. Over the past 100 plus years, and nobody has touched Teon's feet in the American League. Minus 2020, the lowest ERA in the American League since Teon was a 1.74 mark by Pedro Martinez. To this day, it was one of the greatest pitching seasons anyone has ever thrown, and then Louis Teon did it again four years later. In 1972, across 19 games started and 43 overall, Tion threw 179 innings, went 15-6, while recording an ERA of 1.91, adjusted ERA of 169, a whip of 1.078, struck out 123 batters, and earned 6.5 war. What Tion accomplished that season has been done only by a few throughout MLB history. You see, in the live ball era, there have been only 47 instances of a qualified pitcher recording an ERA under 2. Tiant is one of 7 pitchers to have multiple seasons of that feat. Again, that's 47 occurrences of a sub-2 ERA in the past century, with 7 pitchers having multiple such seasons, and Tiant is one of those 7. The other 6 are Roger Clemens, Clayton Kershaw, Sandy Koufax, Greg Maddox, Pedro Martinez, and Hal Newhauser. For those unaware, those last four mentioned are all in the Hall of Fame, while Kershaw will be a first ballot electee, and as for Clemens, I already explained. A very short list that includes the greatest pitchers of all time, and Tiant is a part of that group. The question remains, if Louis Tiant is one of the greatest pitchers, not just of his generation, but of all time, why has he not been elected into the Hall of Fame? Honestly, it's hard to say. He was a very good pitcher for a long time, and it feels obvious, at least to me, that he should have been elected by now. I'll be the first to say his career stats are not elite, but they are comparable and even better than many pitchers that are in the Hall of Fame. To compare Tian to a pitcher who is in the Hall, he had a very similar career to Jim Bunning. As you can see, Bunning threw about 300 more innings and appeared in a handful more games, but several other statistics are near identical. Very similar win-loss record, ERA, and adjusted ERA. Bunning has a slight advantage in strikeout and walk rate, but Tiant has the higher war. If you believe Bunning deserves to be in the hall, it would be hard to argue against Tiant. I think what ultimately hurts Tiant's case was a poor stretch he had during his prime years. Following the historic 1968 season, Tiant led the league in losses in 1969 and dealt with injuries in 1970 and 1971. During that three-year stretch, Tiant went 17-30 across 400 innings while recording a 98-adjusted ERA. It would not be far-fetched to say that had he stayed healthy and not been so unlucky with the losses, he could have reached the 250-win milestone, further cementing his case. Following his retirement, Tian spent all 15 available years on the Hall of Fame ballot, only reaching 20% of the vote once. He appeared on the Veterans Committee ballot three times in the 2010s, falling well short of induction each and every time. How someone of his caliber continues to get so disrespected by the voters, I have no idea. He'll be eligible for election again in just one year for the 2025 class. And should he appear on the ballot, Hopefully the voters will finally come to their senses and elect a player who should have been inducted decades ago. Louis Tiant, one of the greatest and most underrated pitchers ever to play in Major League Baseball, who absolutely needs to be enshrined in the Baseball Hall of Fame.